So yes, um, somebody asked me, what are, what are you preaching on tonight? This young lady right down here. And I said, are you ready? But you can take that a couple of different ways because are you ready to meet Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you ready that way? Or are you ready to share Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you ready that way? And tonight it's, are you ready to share him? Um, yes, both these are very important uh, because if, if you plan on seeing Jesus, you've got to know Jesus in your heart. And if you, but at the same time, the word tells us that everyone will hear, have a chance to hear the gospel. And at that time, he will return. And I always say that would be super cool if I was like the last one that, you know, I'm over in some jungle somewhere and I'm talking to this dude and I asked him if he knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he goes, no, but I do want to. And I share the gospel with him, share Jesus' love with him, and bam, he comes back and we're out of there. It'd be just super cool if I was the, you know, or Ryan down here doing the work of Christ. You know, it'd be just super cool. All right, so... Here at the last biker church I was at, um, I noticed this young lady, she was kind of bounce, hobbling around. Um, you know, pastor told me to, to mention biker church, and it just happens to be in the first few lines here. And it's every fourth Sunday, so this Sunday coming up is biker church, um, which is really cool that pastor supports us and everything that we do there, um, because it's just, we're, we're just preaching the gospel just like this church here. And so it's just super cool that he allows us to uh, this be a platform for us to talk about that. But anyway, so um, I was talking to her and, and I asked her what happened. She said she was just doing something very simple and she bent over and, and she picked up something and she threw her back out. And um, I could, you know, I told her, I said, you know, I threw my back out a lot of times also not quite for sure why I would throw my back out. And I think Angie might have a video there, or Valerie's gonna click a button. And this might show you a reason why I throw my back out. Maybe. <laughs> Ready? Oh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. Oh. And I'm not for sure why I walk bow legged either. So, so that might be a reason why I throw my back out. If you're wondering, it weighs about 240 pounds and I weigh about 180 pounds. And so, um, but there might be a reason why I throw my back out. I'm not quite for sure. But I told her the best thing that I ever started doing was I started going to the gym. I started going there two or three times a week and I just started working every muscle that I have in my body. If it's my back, if my abs, if it's arms. It don't look like I do, but I do. And, um, you know, she has, she has two kids, uh, two young boys, and these boys are very much young boys. I mean, they're like bouncing off the walls, running around, you know, mom, mom, he, he's hitting me again. Mom, he's doing this to me again. And she looks at me and she, she's like, like, I even have time to go. I don't even have time to wrestle down my kids more or less go to the gym and, you know, uh, and I asked her, I said, have you ever watched your dog or your cat um, when they get up from a nap? What's the first thing they do? They stretch, they arch their back, they're, you know, they're, they're stretching, they're preparing for what they're getting ready to do. And so, again, she still looked at me like I was nuts that, you know, but I said, you know, it's just about... Um, we as humans... You know, she just looked at me like, how is this going to help? But we as humans like to go, go, go. You know, we're constantly on the go. Um, we get into our habits and we don't have time until we need it. And that's what I told her. I said, you know, I'd throw my back out and I'd be like, I'm going to the gym or I'm stretching every morning. And, you know, I would do that until your back gets feeling better. And then you stop. You know, and then that habit, you quit doing that habit. And so, <clears throat> we as humans, I see us doing this a lot of times with the Word of God right here. 
You know, you dig in the Word, you dig, 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 you find that Scripture that, that helps you at the time, and then once your back is healed, once your problem's fixed, then you, you, don't, you don't open it anymore. I, find my, I found myself um, doing this. You know, I pack my Bible into work, and then I put it on my desk, and then I pack it back out to the truck, I take it on vacation with us. It's in the, it's in my, you know, in the saddlebag of the motorcycle. Um, but did I open it the whole time that I was there? No, I don't. I don't open it. And so, um, we just we gotta we gotta find out. I gotta figure out where I'm at in my notes now because I'm jumping all over the place. Um, I'm going to, we need to open up the word and find out where we're at and what every day. And the word tells us to get in scripture because it tells us 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and what makes us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses this to prepare and equip his people to do every good works. And so it just tells us that God wants us to get into the word. And when we get into the word, he, he helps us find out where we need to be. He, he, he prepares us for what is coming up next. So we don't throw our back out because we don't get into the word. We don't throw our back out. We use this word, you know, as the gym. You know, we're building muscles, we're building it, we get it into our brain, and we we're, we're use it when we need it. And this tells us that when we get into the Word of God, He will prepare and equip His people like going to the gym. It prepares the body for you to bend over, to tie your shoe, to pick up that side of beef, to, to sweep the porch. I swept, was sweeping the porch one day and threw my back out and literally crawled into the living room. So that's why I put, and clean your porch. And so, um, but at the same time, Proverbs 27, 17 of the New Living Translation, as iron sharpens irons, so friend sharpens a friend. And so we need in our inner circle, we need to have those people in our life. We need to have those people in our lives so they can lift us up just as the Word lifts us up, but they can prepare us. You know, if we're going through a rough time, there's nobody better than lean on my wife. You know, um, if she's going through a rough time, she'll lean on me. And that's what we need to learn to do is we need to find that inner core, that inner circle and I don't have many in that circle because you can't always trust that circle sometimes. But I know I can trust my wife. But we as friends need to lift one another up, iron sharpening iron. But how, how are you going to do that if you don't know the Bible? You know, if I just pack it in and out of work and on vacation and wherever else I might go, but I don't ever open it, I don't ever learn it, how are you going to use the word? And how? And you also got to make time. You might tell me, as that young lady did, she was telling me, or just, she didn't tell me, but she looked at me, and she's like, how do I even have time? You know, I have to, rat, you know, circle round up these kids, try to get them into the school bus. I got all this stuff going on. But, you know, you can do me a favor and you can, like, open up your phone and you go over to the very last screen and it tells you how many hours you spend on this wonderful thing, but yet you're trying to tell me you don't have time. You know, and you, I feel good, you know. It's like I'm sitting there on Sunday, it always pops up on Sunday, and it might say your usage is down, you know, 10%. I'm like, that's right. I didn't get on my phone as much that time. That's right. We bad. We bad. That's right. And, but when you look down to it, you were on your phone six or seven hours a, a day. 
And, you know, I'm just like, it blows my mind sometimes as how much, and I work from 8 o'clock, or George is saying you put in time, but, you know, um, I work from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. But yet at the same time, I'm still putting in four or five, six hours a day on my phone. And I'm like, how is that even possible? And so we do have time. It's just priority of that time. And so you got to ask, that, that's right where the devil wants us to be. And you might ask, where is that? Too busy for God. That's where he wants us to be. He wants us to be too busy to take time out for God and be prepared. And so Psalms 46.10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will, honor, I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. And so what exactly does that mean? What does that mean to be still? God wants us to stand empty. He wants us to stand empty. What does that mean? He wants us to give all that we have to give. He wants us to give him our concerns. He wants us to give our anxieties. He wants us to give all that we have to give to him. And then stand and listen. So we stand there empty. You know, I don't have a cup, but empty is just a cup. And so you're standing there. You don't have in the back of your head, man, I want that new Harley Davidson. Or you don't have on this side of your brain, man, I really got to go to work tomorrow and I got all this stuff I got to do. He doesn't want you standing there thinking about all this other stuff. He wants your time. He wants you to stand there, be still, and listen. And so the Bible says It says that busyness leads to spiritual disconnection from God. So if we're too busy for God and we don't stop, and I'm preaching to me, folks. I'm very busy. (laughs) I'm not picking on one in particular person because as I was writing this out and figuring this up, I'm like, dude, you're stepping on your own toes. What are you doing? And so anyway, but yeah, so it's, you know, It doesn't necessarily come out and say bluntly this way, but it says that, you know, it leads to spiritual disconnection from God in Psalms 46.10. There's a direct link between being still and knowing that God is truly God. If you're too busy for God, your stillness before the Lord will vanish. And along with that vanishing will be your peace, because without God, there is no more peace. That's why so many people, when they started taking the Ten Commandments and they started taking all this stuff out of our, our culture, out of our buildings, they're tearing down statues, they're doing all this stuff, and is this world very peaceful right now? No, people are after everybody because you offend me just by looking at me wrong. You, you say the wrong thing, you use the wrong pronouns or whatever else it might be, and you're stepping on somebody's toes. And I'm sorry if that hurts somebody's feelings, but it's just true facts because we have taken God so far out of this that we need Him as a nation. We need Him as a world. And without Him, there is no peace. God is shalom. He is complete peace. The only peace that we can get from Him is through Him. The sinful nature that the world, that Satan thrives when we are too busy for God. The Bible says that if if you want to know God, then you must avoid being too busy. To be still, you must stop. And if you're moving, you're busy. Busy is different for everyone. And people ask Sherry and I, how do we do all that we do? And I believe that you can also tithe your time. Just like you tithe your money, you tithe your time. God gives you more time if you give Him time. You know, and people ask us, and you know, a prime example, you, Donald Trump, like him, dislike him, but the man only sleeps about three or four hours a night. 
I can't function on three or four hours a night. I need my beauty sleep for all I can get. And, and trust me, I need all I can get. Um, but Donald Trump sleeps three or four hours a night. And, you know, he's, I, I forget how old he is at this time. He's in his 70s. I want to say like 78. No, yeah. 78, something like that. And the dude, he doesn't shuffle his feet. He, he walks in stride. He doesn't shuffle. I mean, you would never guess him to be 80 years old. He is vibrant. He is very on it at his wits and everything else. And so, you know, some people need to function better when they get more sleep, not him. And the same way with time, you know, Sherry and I, um, in the CMA, we have six chapters that we take care of. Everywhere from Houston, Missouri to Warsaw, Jeff City, the lake area here, um, we're everywhere. And, and, and on top of that, I'm, a, you know, I'm on the ministry team here at Walk of the Water. I'm a pastor of the Biker Church. Um, I have eight grandkids. I mean, my life is busy. And... Um, and, and I try to be a good husband. That's, that's like up there too, I try to be. But um, right here in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And so with that scripture, that just backs up what I was saying, is that if you tithe your time, the Lord is going to bless you let me rephrase that. If you tithe your time for God, the Lord will bless you. He will bless you with more time at the end of the day. It's just like your money. If you, if you tithe your money cheerfully, then you will have more money at the end of the month instead of more month at the end of your money. And everybody needs more money at the end of the month. And so... That's just where, you know, I just believe that what you sow, you reap, but you have to do it cheerfully. If you give God your time, He will give you the time you need in your ministry, your family, your work, whatever that might be that you need that more time for, He will bless you. Sooner than later, you must find, find time. Um, for me... I had to make more time, and it was not at the end of the day, because we're always going here and there and everywhere else. So I had to make time in the, day, in the morning, and so my alarm goes off at 4.15 every day, and that's, I get up, I stumble into the, into the, the kitchen, and I drink two glasses of water before I am even awake. And you might ask, why do I do that? Well, the younger me would just get up, take a shower, run out the door, grab a can of Mountain Dew, and out the door I got, and down the throat, all the good caffeine and sugar on an empty stomach. It was great. But as you get a little bit older, there's this thing called, um, uh, yeah, uh, antacid. And so you get up in the morning, you put that on the, you know, you put that caffeine on your empty stomach, next thing you know, you're feeling it all day long. So I decided to start drinking two glasses of water, and then I put that caffeine on my stomach, and it seems to work out perfect. But I, I, I had to make time in the day to go to the gym, because I didn't have time at the end of the day, I didn't have time in the middle of the day, so I had to make more time. So like I said, 4.15, the alarm goes off, I do that, and I get in the Word, I grab my phone, and I get in the Word daily, and dig into some scriptures, and just, you know, I, and that's, that's where I had to make my time to get into the Word, because by the time I get home at night, I'm just zombied, and I'm done. Um, you know, when, when the enemy, when the devil came against Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus had plenty of time to prepare. 
You know, he had 40 days and 40 nights that he was just wandering around, and apparently he didn't have to think about what, he, where, what fast food place he was going to stop because he didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. So he, he didn't have to worry about food. He, I guarantee it he was praying to his father because just it, especially towards the end of the 40 days, you know, he had to be, um, you know he had to be hungry. And so when the enemy came towards him in the wilderness, Jesus didn't get upset. Jesus didn't freak out and say, man, my anxiety's high today. No, I can't do this. He attacked him with the word. And that's where we need to be. When the enemy comes against us, whatever it might be, if you're in the hospital, um, if, you're, if you're, somebody cuts you off on the road and you want to say howdy to them, you know, no, you pray for them people. You, you know, you, you don't necessarily just uh, let the flesh win. You got to, you know, you got to be prepared for those situations that the enemy throws at you. And so, but Jesus, that's exactly what he did. He attacked the devil, he was prepared, and he attacked the enemy with the word. And that's where we need to be. We need to be ready to defend ourselves, defend others when the enemy, and when the enemy comes and somebody gets you in, into Walmart or something like that. Hey man, will you keep me, keep me in your prayers? Don't walk away from them. You'll forget by bedtime. At least I will. You grab their hands right there in the middle of Walmart and start praying for them. You're prepared for that. That's why we get into this word. That's why we, we, we want to be prepared. So we defend others. We defend ourselves. And then we do this with the word. The question of the day. Are you prepared? I know I am. I got my notes. They're all numbered on the bottom of the page like Pastor told us to do. If all else fails, I got my notes on my word on my phone. I came prepared. I came prepared to share what the Lord has laid on my heart with you guys tonight. But, I know some of you, this might have been last minute, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to go to walk on the water tonight. I got some time. I'm going to go, go see what I can get at church. But a lot of you guys knew you were coming. Did you prepare yourself to receive? What was the last thing that you were saying in your car? Or what was the last thing that you were doing at your house? Were you watching an R-rated movie with a bunch of whatever, fill in the blanks? Were you listening to a bunch of slam metal in your car and it's just a bunch of cussing and a bunch of this and that? Were you hanging out at the bar? What were you doing today? Prepare yourself to hear the word of God tonight when you came here. It's, I, know that, I know that we don't... Um, none of us would walk out of here on a Sunday here at Walk on the Water Faith Church and say, man, I didn't get much out of that today. But pastor, it's not all pastor's job to prepare for you to receive. Because it's about the ground that he's planting that seed. And so, Luke 8, 4, 8. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on a rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because of lack of moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, yield a crop a hundredfold. And he said these things, he cried, 
He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So the question of the day, who are you? Are you the wayside? Are you the rocks? Are you the thorns? Or are you the good soil? How do you prepare yourself to receive? If you're preaching to yourself in the morning, if you're coming here on a Thursday night or Sunday morning, how are you preparing yourself? We have to be still. Be still and know that He is God. Why do we need to be still? Psalms 121, 1 through 8. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from the winch comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He will keep, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is, is your keeper. The Lord is, is your shade of your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even for forevermore. That's why we have to stop, be still. And listen, because if we do these things, God is all of that. He's our keeper, he's our shade, he's our protector. That's why it's so important sometimes to stop, to be still, and listen. He provides this stuff for us. The Lord is why we need to stop. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that some of the roughest things are the prettiest? For instance, carbon deposits. Not very pretty before they become a diamond. What about a pail of paint? Not very pretty until it hits the canvas and becomes some beautiful painting. Clay? When it's still in the wrapper, it doesn't look like much. But when an artist can form it and, and, you know, make it look like something other than just a lump of clay. And a caterpillar. Don't forget the caterpillar. You know, fuzzy wuzzy caterpillar going along the ground. And then all of a sudden it becomes this beautiful butterfly. And so they, they all had to lose their old selves to become something beautiful. They had to leave their old self. That is like God with us. We might think that we like ourselves the way that we are, but God's plan is always better for us. It is the ultimate plan. All we must do is to go forward and put our faith in God, to give it to Him, to stop And be still and know that He is God. He doesn't change all of who you are. But He does, but He doesn't. What do I mean? Some of the the biggest, baddest bikers with long hair, bushy beards, holy jeans... You know, these guys, they may look kind of rough and tough on the outside, on the exterior, but the Lord has changed these guys. These guys are out there serving Jesus any shape and form that they can. 
They go in some of the darkest places that you don't want to go into, but they do. These guys are a little bigger than I am. (laughs) But you know what? They got my back. And that's, you know, sometimes Jesus might have you cut your hair, change your clothes, put on a suit and tie. But other times, Jesus just leaves you the way you are on the outside. But yet your inside is completely transformed. It is completely made whole and new. You leave that old man behind you and you come to the the new. But yet we... A friend of mine... A group of friend of mine uh, from CMA is the leadership. They were over at the church, or I'm sorry, over at the hospital. Uh, One of them got sick off of some food or something or another. And there was a a secular motorcycle member over there, a one percenter. And he has physically thrown things at the, the, the chaplain of the church or of the hospital as he tried to enter into the room because he didn't want nothing to do with that guy. And like I said, CMA was over there and he happened to be outside sitting on the bench outside the emergency room there. And, and uh, he, was, he was a guy that took care of business. If there was someone that needed to be taken care of, the alligators have to eat. And so he was here in Missouri trying to get away. And one of our CMA guys went over to him, started talking to him. And he talked to them because he recognized the patch. Long story short, he accepted Lord. Two weeks later, he passed away. And so, he wouldn't talk to a suit and tie. He didn't want nothing to do with them. But he recognized the patch. And the patch opens doors. And that's why, that's why I do what I do. Because it opens doors. So what do you have to give to Jesus today? What behavior, habits, thoughts do you need to crucify today? Come as you are to Jesus today and give him permission to change you to the new you, to that diamond in the rough, to that butterfly. That's what it's all about, folks. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus. Because when it's all boils down to it, we all, none of us, you know, we all say that we, we're going to live to 120 because that's what the Bible says. But not very many do. And we all want to. We all want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise and live to that 120 and just vanish. You know, we don't even want to die. We just want to be in heaven. But if something, when you're going home, if you're here in this building or if you're if you're you're out at out at your home, you know, at work and you just happen to be listening to me, do you know if something would happen where you would be? So if you would repeat after me. Father God, I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, amen. If this is the first time that you have ever said that, expect the change. If you look on that screen, you'll see my phone number. I'm going to say it just so for whatever reason it doesn't happen to go on the screen. That's 573-723-2414. You call me day and night. You can ask my wife, I get phone calls. It could be midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Somebody's down on a bike, they need prayer. And so the phone is on all the time. 
hit us on the phone. If you have a question that, you know what, I just said that prayer with you, but what exactly does that mean? What does that mean you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I, the Lord doesn't expect you to know everything about the Bible inside and out. He just expects you to come to Him. Come to Him and be still and allow Him to come into your heart. Give Him permission to come in. That's what it's all about, folks. It's about Jesus. When it all boils down, you know, I was talking to, uh, I'll just, it was a, basically a Catholic priest today. He came over and we went and sat inside the church and he was laughing at my motorcycle pulpit that I have there at the biker church. And uh, he goes, you, you don't, you don't have a, an, you don't have a, uh, an altar. You don't have a podium. Well, I couldn't do service here because it needs to be this big by that big and an altar. And I'm like, okay. And we just got to talking and long story short, he believes that Jesus Christ is the only way to, to save your soul. But yet he has a lot of rituals. And I told him, I said, you know, I was talking to him and I'm, I'm like, I probably spent an hour with him over there. And we just talked about different beliefs that we have. And I said, buddy, it doesn't matter if I genuflect, give the sign of the cross, if I, what I do, it's all about Jesus. It's about accepting him. And so if you ever have any questions, feel free to give me a call on my number. Guys, I'm gonna, that's going to be the end of it tonight. I thank everybody for coming. I thank you for joining. Jerry, you're healed. And uh, just remember, Jesus is Lord. I'm going to pray us out. Father God, we just come to you. We thank you, Father. I thank you for the words that you have given me. Father, I thank you that you use me. Use these others. Allow them to be prepared to share the gospel with those they come in contact with. Father, I just ask you that you give them the boldness to speak your words into others' lives. Father, I just thank you that there is, uh, that you are who you are. I thank you for just blessing us to be here tonight and to share your word. Father, I thank you for uh, Pastor Larry and Walk on the Water Church. Father, I thank you for all that they have done for us and blessed us. And Father, I just uh, give us safe journeys on the way home. Keep us upright between the ditches. And Father, I just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.